Going live. Going live. I think I'm live. Good. Good, good. Start a little bit earlier. I usually start my streams a little bit earlier on YouTube just to let people come into the stream. But welcome everyone to the stream. Let's see here. It was weird not being able to post a link on my Discord server <laughs> since my uh, Discord account got disabled. Lucario smells like pee. I hate him. Hi, Georg. Hi, Lucario smells like pee. I hate him. I missed you. I miss you too. Okay. But we can hang out together for the next couple hours looking at some potentially garbage products from Poundland. Yay. How fun's that? Hi George, how are you? I'm good, Cassie. I hope you're well since the past couple of days since I haven't spoken to you. Also, one of you, if you could put if you could put a link in the um in the Lucario promotion section, that would be much appreciated. Um <clears throat> anyway. Hi, I'm Epi by the way. I know you're Epi. But your name is Lucario it smells like P, I hate him. <laughs> so that is how you must be referred to as. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. No, I'll, I'll call you Epi when we actually start, which is in a few minutes. Um, I'd also like to note, I haven't planned this stream. Usually I write notes on, uh, on what I'm going to say, but I haven't done that because I've been lazy. So, <laughs> yay, George winging it. You're doing great. Oh, that's amazing, Cassie. Love to hear it. Should have some water. Stay hydrated, people. Mm. Lovely jubbly. I've also got my, uh, hang on, my Nintendo shirt on today. Very nice. The fine, very nice drip. Not as good as Lucario's. You should still buy that. But Nintendo also has some good merchandise okay i guess i should uh outline the plan for this stream so the plan is i'm gonna kind of yeah i'm gonna show you poundland products that's kind of the plan um we're gonna see how good they are we're gonna see if you know if you if you are genuinely considering buying a piece of technology, should you buy it from Poundland or not? Like, is it actually worth considering as an option? You love the shirt. I like this shirt too. Hence why I bought it. Mm. Very fancy. You can see the the lovely Poundland bag here with stuff in it. Mmm. Very fancy. Pow yeah. Um anyone not British. Basically just the British version of the dollar store. Um although we do also have the 99p store, which I would argue is the actual British version of the dollar store, but because it has a store in the name, whereas pounds pound land, which is land in the name and Blah, 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 blah. But it's a similar thing, you know, everything's cheap, everything's not the best <laughs> in terms of quality, uh, but you get what you pay for. But uh, is what you pay for any good? Mm. We'll be finding out today. Okay, it is, it is three o'clock, so I shall start officially. Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Today, I'm going to be looking at technology from Poundland. So earlier this week, I went to Poundland and I bought some of the pieces of technology. Uh, I bought some of the tech that you can find 
in the Powerland deck tech. The, the, I can't talk. I literally can't talk. I went into Powerland and bought some tech that, uh, yeah, it's questionable. Now, given the fact that this tech is from Poundland, it's questionable the level of quality that Poundland um, gives, you know? <laughs> like, and so today in the stream, we are going to be finding out, is Poundland something to consider when buying technology? Or is it just something that you should avoid entirely? and not go to so is the product are the products basically just e-waste waiting to go into the bin or are they actually something you might want to use let's find out okay but poundland is such a horrible name for a store do they really have to go with poundland like what i don't know i don't think it's that bad of a name it's the land of things that cost around a pound. Or the majority of things cost a pound. None of the things I bought today cost a pound. There were some pieces of tech that cost a pound. Like there was a mouse, I think, that cost a pound. But nothing that I actually... <laughs> nothing that I bought today costs a pound. But anyway. So before that, so before we get into what products I've bought... I'm going to play you a little video of the shopping experience going around Poundland. Okay, let's hope the video works. Let me know if you can hear it loud and clear. Oop. Here we are at the land of the pound. Now, well, given the fact this is Poundland, there's quite a big range of products, really. Got some speakers, keyboard and mouse. Open wireless charging mouse man. Ah, and here we have all the gaming stuff. A gaming sound bar for six pounds. Pretty basic, with nothing, no information on it at all. A gaming mouse pad. Got a cool design on it. There's a gaming mouse here for four pounds. Oh. Fitness tracker from Poundland for ten pounds. Not sure how good a fitness tracker from Poundland entirely is going to be, but ten quid. Not much to complain about. They've got these wireless trackers here that are like air tags, but they're four pounds. So might pick one of those up. Whoa, as seen on TV. These crappy headphones where the box is just kind of falling apart. The abundance of phone cases that nobody wants. Another portable sound bar. And we've got kind of these children's style headphones. What is that? Friends headphones. Friends themed headphones. I might get those. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I've got like PlayStation 4 decal skin. And this is kind of the quarter you get a pound now, people are just opening up the boxes. <laughs> These metal roller headphones don't actually look half bad. 15 quid, but more expensive than the rest of them, but they actually look some more quality. It's got a wireless Bluetooth speaker, it looks like a boom box. I don't think that would sound very good. Alright, I've got the goods. Let's get them home so we can uh, Show you what I got. Okay, thank you, me from three days ago for showing that. Um, yeah, <laughs> hope you enjoyed that little shopping montage there. Eh. I move my keyboard out of the way so I can unbox things on my table. If they were as seen on TV, they have to be cool. Well, I didn't buy those, so. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I did. I did have a budget for these things. You want that boombox? I promise you don't, Cassie, because it probably sounds like a tin can. 
guarantee it from it was like literally this big like a speaker this big like a phone speaker anyway um okay thank you george from three days ago for that now let's get into the bag of products so in total i spent 35 pounds on everything in this bag so you know pretty cheap given the amount of i bought five items so pretty cheap given the amount of items i bought for the price but the real question is are they any good and that's that's what we're going to find out in this stream so let's start the unboxing Aha. okay they seem to they seem like the kind of stuff to break in three days yeah that's something we won't be able to test in this stream is the longevity of these devices and how reliable they are but this is a i did actually have first impressions in the title originally but i got rid of that to shorten the title anyway let's start with the first product uh right what should we do what should we do first should i, should I show you all the products and then you guys can say which one you want to see next right or i'll give you i'll give you like two options for products and then you can tell me which one you want to see next so do you want to see first the gaming sound bar which i'm not entirely sure how good that is or do you want to see the fitness tracker <laughs> Hello, Andrew Crossing. Welcome to the stream. Which which product do you want to see first? Unboxed first. Do you want to see the gaming soundbar or the fitness tracker? That's why I see sounds filled here in the background. Yes, Brian told me to put that there for a job interview. So I did. And I got that job. So I'd say it worked. Um, gaming soundbar sounds ridiculous. Let's do that first. I agree with Epi. <laughs> let's unbox the gear. Let's have a look at the gaming soundbar. So, on the box, you have obviously a picture of the soundbar. On this side, it has 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is kind of like the bare minimum for an audio device, and a 5 watt peak output, which is something that will mean absolutely nothing to the average consumer. Um, it says on this side, it says on this side, Windows compatible, Mac OS X compatible, and monitor compatible. I'm not entirely sure what monitor compatible means. Um, last time I checked, there isn't an operating system called monitor. But hey ho, and then the rest of the box, as I said in the video, is just completely blank because there's nothing else. Apart from the name, just gaming soundbar. Yeah. GG George. Yes. Glad to hear you're good, Andrew Crossing. Long time no see. It's been a long time since I've done a YouTube stream. It's been too long, I would say. But uh, it's good to be back. Good to be back. Right. Let me just. Um, I'm just going to put my headphones on my windowsill, actually, so they're out of the way. Let me just adjust the camera. Haha, uh -huh, very funny. So if I... Come on. Tripod here. If I tilt it down... And then... Across... You can see the soundbar there. Oh, let me just tighten it up. There we go. That looks all right. You can kind of see the mess on my floor, but I don't particularly mind. Right, let's open the box here. 
I'm going to be kind of speeding through this because I've got a lot of products to do. I don't want the stream to be too long. Okay. Got some paper looking packaging here and a built in cable, and that is it. That is literally it. There is nothing else in the box. It's just the soundbar. <laughs> Let's uh, put that down there. <laughs> da, 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 da. There we go. We have the gaming soundbar. Okay, well first off the bat, it does, like first off the bat that I'm noticing, it does have some weight to it. Like it's not completely hollow, like I was kind of expecting. I don't know what this is in the middle. I thought that might be a volume wheel from, from the pictures, but uh, it didn't seem to spin, so I'm not sure what that is in the middle. Or a built-in cable, so you can't remove the cable. And this just goes to, I don't know if you can see that, if it'll focus. This just goes to a USB port and a headphone jack. So it's USB powered, so you don't need wall power for this, which is good. Great to be back. But actually, this is my first George stream on YouTube. Well, welcome, Cassie. So happy to have you. Move this back up again. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I can do kind of the talking head part of this screen. Oh, it's a bit low. Turn my head off. Yeah. It's going to be a very long stream if I'm going to be adjusting my camera like that all the time. It also seems to have a little volume control thing. It's got like a little little wheel on the side there, you can see. Controlling the volume, I presume. I don't know what Yeah. Obviously everything's obviously everything's made of plastic and it's you know very cheap feeling, but I mean if it sounds good, maybe it might be worth the money. The money being six pounds for this. This was just six pounds, as I think you saw in the video. Help not the tissue paper wrapping. Yes, the tissue paper wrapping. <laughs> very protective, very protective, I'm sure. Okay. I think what I'll do is... Yeah, we'll, we'll test it out now, I guess. So let's... Get the gaming soundbar plugged in so we can give it a listen. All right, let's get this plugged in so we can give it a listen. Also, if you're wondering why I'm repeating loads of things, it's because I will make this into a YouTube video and I want to have multiple takes, <laughs> which just makes it easy for editing George. Hi, editing George. I'm going to say hello to myself in my only bedroom. Uh, yeah, can I unplug my headphones? Plug in my speaker. I'm gonna plug this into, oh geez. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Did you hear that? I went to plug in the speaker. I'm gonna hold it up to the microphone to see if you can hear it. Not coming through on that microphone, but it's kind of got like this weird staticky noise as you plug it in, which is a bit unsettling. But it's only while you're plugging it in. It's not. Nope, nope. I take that back. It is while it's plugged in as well. There is a very. It's not playing anything right now, and there's a very loud, very mild like hum to the speakers. Hang on, let me let me use my blue snowball microphone. And see if it picks it up. 
Is this microphone? This microphone isn't picking it up. Um, I wonder if I turn off my noise gate here. Can you hear that? I don't know. It's very quiet. So when it's actually sitting down on your desk, you can't actually hear it. <laughs> I mean, it's not too bad because when it's sitting, you know, far away from you, it's not too bad. So it's just something I've noticed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get that static thing with like almost all my audio devices. But then again, most of them are pretty cheap. Or well, maybe you should invest in some quality, quality stuff. I don't know. Oh, this is a volume slider. So if I turn the volume I think it's coming through now. I've turned up the volume. Like a very mild humming noise. And when you turn up the volume to the maximum you can hear it from a distance away. I should, but I'm broke and need money for Kirby. That is a probably a much better spend of your money than, than a gaming soundbar or some audio gear. So let's let's not turn it up all the way just yet. Okay, if I go over to screen capture, oh, you can see OBS. Um. I'm just going to bring up an YouTube video, preferably my own YouTube video, <laughs> so I don't get claimed. Let's play my, can you still hear me? Yeah, you can. Good. I did set up the microphone correctly. Huzzah. Um, yeah, let me just F11 that. Okay, let's play the... Wait, it is using, yeah, so speakers, real tech audio, that should be this soundbar. So let me turn it all the way down first. Okay, I'm going to play one of my own videos here. Can you even hear that? That's at max volume. Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Today we are going to be looking back at a piece of history. Hi George. To be off. On the 9th of January, yeah, it was supposed to be off. 2007, Steve Jobs showed the world this. The original iPhone. The phone that quite literally revolutionized the entire world and has changed history forever. And so given how revolutionary this phone was for the time. What can it still do 14 years after it was released? Well, that's what we're here to find out. That doesn't sound half bad for six quid. Sure, there's the background static noise. And sure, there's the... The bass is quite loud. But the vocals are quite pronounced. It's not, it's not that bad, I'd say. You can't hear George from the past a little bit. Could you not hear the... Could you not hear the... The, the soundbar? It's quite loud. <laughs> That's pretty alright. Yeah, I think it's pretty alright. Let me, let me put my microphone up to the... Up to it, so that you can hear it better. I'm going to have to... Um, I'm going to hold my microphone like next to it so <laughs> you can hear it a bit better.
Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Today, we are going to be looking back at a piece of history. Oh, you're supposed to be off. On the 9th of January, 2007, Steve Jobs showed the world this. The original iPhone. The phone that quite literally revolutionized the entire world and has changed history forever. And so given how revolutionary this phone was for the time, what can it still do 14 years after it was released? Well, that's... I don't think that's half bad. Do you? Let me just put my microphone back on myself. I mean, sure, there is a bit more bass than usual. Let me go back to full screen cam and also bring up chat again. Sure, there is a bit more bass than usual. And sure, it's not the best sounding thing in the world, obviously. But for six pounds? If you, if you just want to watch YouTube videos, that sounded all right. I'd, I'd listen to that if I didn't have any other speakers. In fact, I used to have some other speakers. I used to use speakers primarily at my desktop. And they didn't sound anywhere near as good as that. Well, they didn't go as loud as that, rather. <laughs> so if you don't mind the slight hum when they're off and not playing anything, um, so far they sound all right. Uh, now, we will do some gaming with it later. I would like to point that out. I'm going to be... I've got some other gaming products, and so I'm going to be playing some games with, with the soundbar and the other products. So... Speaking of gaming products, I bought the £4 gaming mouse as well. So this is the Ergo gaming mouse. You can see the... Hang on, let me bring up OBS so I can see what I'm doing. It's a wired mouse, so... It's a wired mouse, but for the price, that's not that's to be expected. It's got listed on there. Focus, please. It's got listed on there. Ergonomic right hand design. Three macro buttons. Adjustable DPI modes. Come on, focus. <laughs> and low input lag. All features that you want on a gaming mouse. But uh, does it actually have any of those things? Let's find out. It also says uh, RGB lighting and flawless pre precision, flawless precision. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see about that. Will you play Fortnite? Maybe. I don't know, I haven't decided things yet. That's pretty good, especially if it's six pounds. Yeah, exactly. Six quid, really not bad. I should have, uh, where's my, my bins over there? I probably should have gotten my bin so I could put all the packaging in it. Although I might actually return some of this stuff rather than <laughs> resell it. Okay. Let me point the camera back down at my desk for the, um, unboxing portion of the stream. There we go. Yeah. Turn that up. I need to get a more professional setup than this. <laughs> yeah, you can see the... We can't see the soundbar. Soundbar's here, but... Uh, so I wasn't chatting a lot, I was getting my breakfast ready. That's okay, Cassie, I hope you're enjoying your breakfast. Right, let's have a look at the gaming mouse. Let's move my Razer mouse, which costs about as much as the everything in the bag combined. <laughs> let's move my Razer mouse out the way that costs about the same as everything that I bought today combined and uh, look at this gaming mouse instead. <laughs> Okay, opening the box, and we have 
Oh, it's falling out of the packaging. <laughs> and there we have the mouse. Oh my word. <laughs> that's uh that's quite a chonkster really, that's quite <laughs> it's quite a big mouse, it must be said. Um Ooh. Can you hear that? Does, does that come through on the mic? Hang on. Yeah, very rough sounding on the, compared to the, the really smooth nature of my Razer mouse. So it may not feel as comfortable. Yeah, there's no padding on here at all. It's just, it's just plastic rubbing against my mouse mat. Um, yeah, I mean, it does look pretty cool. It's got like a kind of angular design to it. So it's got a DPI button in the middle, some programmable button. Oh, they're very clicky and very deep. There's another button here as well, which is a, a position I haven't seen a button on a mouse bin before. But yeah, let me just, oh, spin it across, oh, I'm moving my old tripod, <laughs> and then, eh, come on tripod, work with me, thank you, Whew. a bit higher, yeah, get used to me trying to adjust my tripod throughout the entire stream because this is royally annoying to do. <laughs> there we go. Epic t-shirt. Thank you, Mario Toyd. <laughs> I thought you might like the t-shirt. Oh, do I close my window now? It's kind of, kind of bright with the, the sun, but that's a lot darker. I don't know, I'll keep, I'll keep the window open, I think. No, it's a bit too, it's too bright now, the sun's come out. I look kind of like half and half, kind of like that. There we go. Um, yeah, hey Mario, hope you're doing well. I liked your Mario Kart stream, that was very entertaining. Apart from the mouse itself, it's got kind of a, cheap feeling scroll wheel as well the shape is kind of comfortable it it does fit my hand i we'll have to see how comfortable it is in gaming though it does seem to fit my hand just putting it on it and then it's got this quite long cable here let's get the cable out see how long it is see if it will be able to reach down behind the back of your pc or not uh, Put the packaging down there. You can see the length of the cable is pretty darn long. If I had to guess, I'd say about a meter or so. You can see there how long the cable is. Pretty long, so you shouldn't have any issues routing it down the back of your PC. I'm not going to route it down the back of my PC. I'm just going to plug it into the front because that's that's more convenient <laughs> for me as of right now. But obviously if you were actually gaming and using this mouse, you would route it behind the back of your PC. Um, but for four pounds, so far, not too bad. But just looking at it for four pounds, don't look too bad. Certainly much better than my first mouse I ever used for gaming, which was a Microsoft Basics mouse, which I think we still have in the house somewhere, but I think my mum's using it or something. Right. Oh. 
Okay, I've just I've just plugged it in. I don't know how well you can see that. But I, okay, I'm gonna have to close the the blinds, but you can see no focus on the mouse. You can see there it is glowing. You can see the scroll wheel glowing as well. There you go, there's the RGB that it was talking about in the Stop focusing on me. <laughs> focus on the the mouse. There we go, you can see the RGB there, it was talking about on the box, on the side, on the back, and do the scroll wheel, and I'm not sure it's supposed to be coming out underneath, but it is. <laughs> uh, let me switch over to screen capture again. Okay, so moving around the mouse. You can see the DPI button does seem to work. I've got a low DPI setting. I think this is probably about the same, if not a little bit more than what I regularly have. I'll probably keep it at this one, even though it's a bit lower than what I would usually have. Now with this being a budget mouse, I don't suspect you, there's any sort of software like with my razor mouse there is software to change the DPI presets I don't suspect there's anything like that for this because there's nothing on the box about it okay um, let's close this okay so here is the games that I have installed so what game should we try? I know most of them don't have icons. I don't know why most of them don't have icons. It's very annoying looking at them. Um, so now to test out the gaming sound bar and the gaming mouse, we're going to play some games. So what should we play? You guys always seem to say balloons, but that's not a very good testing game because that doesn't test the sound very well and it doesn't definitely doesn't test the mouse <laughs> let me just get my keyboard back out as well so I can oh, I'm moving my tripod with my keyboard yeah that that hum that's very noticeable still do they always say balloons we did balloons last time Last time I asked people what game I should play, and Epi said balloons, I think. Uh, let me just, hang on, I'm just getting cables routed out the way so I can actually play a game and not just be tangled in cables. I should have like a, like a mouse cam, shouldn't I? The sun is coming out and ruining the lighting of my video. Um, right, let me let me add a what is it? Video source, video capture device. Yeah, webcam two. Oh, that's not what it looks like at the minute. Oh jeez. Uh, deactivate and reactivate. Yay! I'm just going to put this down here. And then point this down. At my setup here. So you can see I'm using the mouse. And I'm using the soundbar as well. Very nice. Hang on. Tilt it up a little bit. You can also see how messy my desk is, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> right, move forward a bit. Um Right, what games have you guys said we should play here? Then so you played balloons before? I did a balloon stream once. <laughs> that was quite interesting. Is goat is, it's not my fault. Um, 
we're gonna do we're gonna start off by playing a shooter game we're gonna play some Fortnite. I don't want to play Fortnite because it takes like seven years to load I'm gonna play TF2 because <laughs> as a game I'm used to how it sounds on my headphones because I play it all the time plus I'm okay at maybe Uno again I'm not sure Uno is a particularly good test of how good the the thing is yeah just leave me alone steam valve gonna go make some breakfast best of luck with the not balloons we might do balloons later oh geez that's um that's interesting sounding to say the least i'm gonna turn it down a bit Using the built-in volume controls. Mm. Let's wait for the game to load and actually start playing sound. Don't want it to be too loud. Also, one thing you may be able to hear is the fact that the click of the mouse is uh, is very loud. <laughs> so, excuse the the loud clicking. Can I do like pop out chat? Pop out chat. If I can see OBS and chat at the same time, that would be that would be convenient. <laughs> There we go. All right. I'm going to quickly jump into a community server here. We'll go to Wonderland T24 server I am a regular person on. That's why I feel my face cams a bit. Bit kind of weird. Uh, there's a little gap. Sorry about this. I'm just. I want to make the stream somewhat professional <laughs> and not look awful when it comes to a video. Right. Let's get into. We can we can do Fortnite later. Maybe when we test. Uh, the other things we bought. Hang on, I'm gonna kind of pushing on my tribe. Oh dear, what have I done? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, soldier. Okay, we're here in TF2 with the gaming mouse and gaming soundbar. Um, I'm uh, supposed to be experiencing the immersive sound of the soundbar right now. Oh dear, I'm not used to a different mouse. Okay, this mouse definitely has different sensitivity settings to what I'm used to. And I have no idea how well you can hear me right now with the... Okay, so if I had to describe the sound of the soundbar, it's very boomy. <laughs> it's very loud. Uh, well, it's, it's not so much loud, it's just very bassy and very boomy sounding. I'm not sure how well that's coming through with the microphone. But, uh, yeah. The way I got to kill. And I died immediately. And then the mouse, I mean, it's somewhat comfortable, I guess. I, I just don't really like how it feels rubbing against my mouse mat. Like, that would be my only complaint with it. Sure, you could probably get used to the stronger, like... You could probably get used to the clickier switches. And you could probably get used to um, the amount of pressure it takes to push down the switches because it is more than 
my regular gaming mouse and what I'm used to. But overall, you could probably get used to this mouse. But one thing I probably wouldn't be able to get used to is the the scratchiness of actually moving it. I don't know why I'm bringing my hand up here. I forgot I had a mouse cam. <laughs> Just the the kind of scratchiness of the mouse on the on my mouse mat. I don't, I don't think that's particularly very pleasant. Oh jeez, I've been sniped. Ah, I got sniped. I didn't see the sniper there. But overall, for four pounds, the mouse is somewhat comfortable. I guess it does somewhat fit a hand. So far, it it does seem somewhat comfortable. It's not the most uncomfortable thing I've used in the world. And then the soundbar, I wouldn't really class this as immersive sound. <laughs> this is definitely still like, this definitely still sounds like a six pound speaker when it comes to gaming, but for, for watching YouTube videos and just general things you might use a speaker for, I think it's all right. But don't expect to get like surround sound or anything out of this because, yeah. <laughs> Pro TF2, you're seeing me fail at TF2 right now. I've got one kill and three deaths. I'd usually have like 10 kills by now. I blame the mouse. <laughs> I don't blame the mouse, it's just that I'm not used to I'm not used to the shape of the mouse. I'm used to having a smaller mouse personally, so that could be something to do with it. But at the end of the day, I am a customer of this mouse and I am just describing how it feels to me. It may feel different to you. You might have bigger hands than I do, but you can kind of see how it fits my hand. And yeah, overall, for the price that I paid for these, not too bad, not too bad. Even though the mouse mat that I'm using, that these two products are sitting on, does cost more than both of them combined. So for £10 for the gaming soundbar and the gaming mouse combined, I, I think this is a fine little setup if you're just starting out in gaming. Obviously it's not going to be anything that will give you a competitive advantage, and if you're interested in competitive gaming, this soundbar is not going to be good enough for that. But overall, if you're just looking to get, if you're just looking for some casual gaming, or if you want to use the soundbar for like a console, and like you want to plug it into your Nintendo Switch or your Xbox or your PlayStation under your TV, I can see that being a, a reasonable, reasonable thing. Or if you play on a laptop, it definitely sounds a lot better than laptop speakers I can tell you that much it's a lot louder as well although if you are looking to buy something for gaming I do recommend buying a headset even a cheap headset will be better than a gaming pair of speakers in my opinion but if you don't want to wear a headset and you want to wear and you want to use speakers instead, then for six pounds, you can't really complain. It makes sound. Sure, everything's a bit boomy sounding, like shooting the rocket is like kind of ear blasting. But in general, it's not that bad. I'm going to die. Yep. All right, I think that's enough, enough game testing. I only really wanted to test one game because we've got other products to test that aren't gaming related. So let me go back to full screen face cam right here and move back a bit. <laughs> so it's not as zoomed in on my face. Okay, so general conclusion of the gaming soundbar and the gaming mouse. For the price, it's alright. 
it works. The game, the mouse is fairly sensitive. I didn't notice any input lag or anything like that. I didn't notice any input lag in the gaming mouse either. And overall, for the features that it has, you know, it's got, a, it's got buttons on it that do things. Yeah, for the price, I'd say it's all right. Maybe if you have smaller hands like me, you might find it a little bit uncomfortable, but yeah. In general, I think I'd recommend this. This is this is pretty decent. If you're just starting out or if you're a child and you just want to get started in gaming, this mouse will do you just fine. If you want to do actual, not casual gaming, I wouldn't recommend getting a gaming speaker any day, even if it's a good one. Because you just don't have that surround sound that you need to play like first person shooters or uh, competitive games. But if you're just playing like Mario Kart, you're plugging this into your Nintendo Switch, it's probably fine. It's going to play the sounds. It's going to sound a little bit boomy, but that's all right. So, yeah, it really just depends on your use case, whether you will want these products. Right, now let me bring up chat again. That's me. I'm a child. Yes, so maybe you might find this pretty helpful epi. Okay, I'm going to unplug these now, uh, <laughs> and we're not going to use them again. Beep boop. I need to clear my desk so I can unbox the next Poundland product. Ugh. Cables everywhere. <laughs> Right, let me just put that on the floor and the unplug the the mouse. There we go. Okay. Oh, using my normal mouse again is so nice. <laughs> oh, right. I currently use a Bluetooth speaker for my uh, or my earbuds for gaming. Should really upgrade. Yes. I think even those Nintendo Switch headphones I looked at would be better than that. Headphones I'd really recommend for gaming. Like that's kind of kind of a given. Most competitive gamers do use that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna take a look at would be the fitness tracker. Now already this box it feels completely empty, <laughs> so I'm not expecting there to be much in here. But uh, how could can a fitness tracker be for £10? On the side here, it has these features of integrated multi-sports and sleep mode. Um, links with phone to receive notifications, alarm setting, remote shutter. Has this thing got a camera on it? No way has this thing got a camera on it for six to for ten pounds. Anyway. It's got a find your phone function, long battery life, blood pressure reader, estimated readings, blood oxygen reader, estimated readings. Yeah. Something for ten pounds is not going to accurately be able to, to read those things. And then at the bottom it has a bunch of features there you can have a look at. Oh, remote shutter is like if you, so if you connect this to your phone, you can put your phone away from you on a tripod and then take a photo by tapping this. I think that's what it is. And then on the other side you can see if it would focus. Someone getting fit. Whoa. You can see it's part of the Vido lifestyle brand. This person's definitely enjoying the Vido lifestyle. <laughs> also claims to be iOS and Android compatible. I will be testing it out on my Android phone. Any of these features? Okay. Not much else on the box. 
I think we've established at this point that in the box there is literally just the product. So I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show you the unboxing experience. I'll just open the box and yeah. <laughs> the box doesn't feel very supportive either. It must be said, it just feels kind of like flimsy cardboard, but. And it's got these annoying stickers that I hate. Because you can't take them off easier. Ugh, there we go. In the box. <laughs> Look in the box. So you've got, in the top there, you've got the smartwatch. And then underneath, there's just nothing. So you've got this fancy piece of cardboard to present the smartwatch and then the rest of the box is just the micro USB cable. <laughs> oh no, it's not a micro USB. And then in the bottom of the box, you've just got this, this interesting charging connector. It's like a little dock, but it's on a cable, which is quite interesting. It has a camera on it. No, it doesn't have a camera on it. I was wrong about that. <laughs> You can use it to take photos from your phone. We'll be trying that out. It does also have instructions here, which are about as bland as can be. I might need these instructions to tell me how to set it up. It tells you how to pair it with your mobile device using the Fitbit tracker, what the different buttons do. There's an app you can download as well. I guess we'll be downloading that app reluctantly. <laughs> um, features as a pedometer, mileage, calories, exercise mode, walking, rope, skipping, sit-ups. Apparently you can track all those things. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be drying out all of these things, obviously. This is just like a little first impressions thing of how good is this thing? Okay, hopefully it's charged as well. Oh geez, do you have to rip the box to open it? It's kind of annoying. Okay, I've got it out of the box here. Got it out of the packaging here. Let's do a little, little peel. You can see the focus, focus, focus on the thing. Very nice. And first impressions, I mean, it feels pretty sturdy, like it doesn't feel terrible. Let's put it on. See how it, how it fits. How comfortable it is. Uh, I think that goes through there like that, and then clip it in place. There you go. Simple as that. So, let me tighten that a bit. My little wrists. You can tell I don't work out much by how small my wrist is. Yeah. That's not too bad. Doesn't feel that bad. I've already been streaming for an hour and I've already done three of the five products. <laughs> oh well. Right, let's see if it's charged. How do you, how do you turn it on? <laughs> there's no buttons on it. So there's just this button at the bottom. Let's look at the instructions. How do you turn it on? Uh, turn on the tracker by pressing and holding the function button for three seconds. One, two, three. It's not turned on. Okay. Let's 
Now where does this charging connector go? How does this plug in? Eh? Where, where do I plug in the thing? Oh, does this come out? Does it come out of the band? I don't want to break it. <laughs> does it come out of the band to charge it? If you have to take it out of the band to charge it, that's quite annoying. But I don't see where else you can plug it in. Uh, let's try taking the band off. It's not coming off. <laughs> I'm probably going to go play some Fortnite, have a good time with the rest of your stuff. Thank you, Epi, for dropping by. It was nice talking to you. Enjoy Fortniteing. Aha, there we go. So you have to take off the band to charge it. And you probably just saw how much I struggled with doing that. So not exactly very convenient to use, it must be said. But once you have got the band off, it does just, does it just slide in there and fits in there. So I'm going to leave that to charge for a bit. And we can come back to that later. I'm going to leave that to charge for a little bit and we're going to come back to it later. Let me just center the camera again here. There we go. Okay, on to the next product. It's the Friends headphones. I had to buy the Friends headphones. I just saw this in Poundland and was like, of all the brands, of all the like brands that you could have put on a pair of headphones, why put friends on a pair of headphones? Like, what does friends have to do with audio gear? I have no idea. It, it just makes no sense. And so I just thought it was kind of ridiculous how friends have a branded pair of headphones. Like, what, what does friends have to do with headphones? Let me, oh my gosh, there's four of those annoying stickers. Keeping it shut. I should just invest in like a knife to cut through these at this point because this is getting annoying. Eh. Okay. One sticker off. I don't know where I'm going to put this, I'm going to just put it on my desk, I guess. Uh, sorry if this isn't particularly interesting, I'm just trying to take all these stickers off because you have to, to unbox it. Eh. Of course this is all part of the Poundland experience unboxing their products. <laughs> now, I do want to keep this box in somewhat good condition so that I can resell it <laughs> afterwards, after making this stream. But uh, these stickers are not making that easy. Okay, one more. <laughs> Sorry that I'm not holding it up to the camera so you can see what I'm doing because it's just easier to do it down here and quicker. Okay, we got the stickers off. The headphones. So in the box, we have eh, 
the headphones themselves, along with a gigantic piece of plastic. I'm noticing a bit of a trend here. That there's like, you know, this giant box for a little product. This massive amount of plastic. They don't seem to be particularly environmentally friendly with this packaging. But here we have the Friends headphones. You can get a bit of a better look at that there. Here we have the Friends headphones. Focus. 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 There you go. You can see the Friends design there. Um, and they are adjustable. You can, as much as it is incredibly hard, but let's, uh, let's, I think I'm going to have to make this the maximum. But first impressions, the quality of it is obviously very cheap. This feels very flimsy. The headband does feel quite sturdy though, given that it's, its size and thickness or girth, I guess you could say. Like it doesn't feel like I could, I could snap this in half, but, and this doesn't feel like the worst plastic in the world. Like it doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart immediately. So let's put them on. Obviously these obviously these are obviously these are on ear headphones. And so yeah, they're not gonna be just trying to adjust it a bit more for my head. How cool do I look with my friend's headphones? Okay, so I'm noticing a bit of a, a bit of an issue here. They're too small for my head. Now I don't know about you, but now I don't know about you, but if they don't fit my head, and the only people I know who are interested in friends are people who were alive in the nineties, aka adults to be able to watch the series what child would be interested in these what child nowadays would be interested in these because they're friends branded which is a brand that like friends is from the 90s like most people most children now i was born after friends stopped airing and i was born and i'm turning 20 this year and so, who do they think is gonna? <laughs> who do they think is gonna actually fit these headphones? Who do they think these? Who do they think this product is for? Like, who are these? Who are these headphones for? Are they for adults? Because they'd be the ones interested in the Friends series, but then they don't fit adults. Or would they be interested? Or would they be marketed for kids? Because they're kind of like smaller headphones, but children nowadays won't know what Friends is. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know who would be interested in those. Yeah, exactly, Cassie. See, Cassie agrees. Don't know who would be interested in them. But I guess... I guess I'll kind of have them on my ears. I mean, this is extended as much as possible. You can see I can't push it up anymore. The cable doesn't feel terrible, but <laughs> I think we've already kind of established why you shouldn't buy these. <laughs> the cable isn't particularly long either. It's fine, I guess. Let me plug it in. I mean, the cable is about as long as my arm. <laughs> And so it just about reaches my computer when, uh, yeah, <laughs> when it's plugged in. So, so, so don't expect to be sitting too far away from the device you're using this with. So let me open up uh, my YouTube video again and change over to screen capture. Let me change over to screen capture. Okay, we can turn off the 
up cam now. There we go. Okay, so let's let's have a little listen to this introduction again with these the friends headphones. Okay, let me let me hold it up to the microphone so you guys can hear what I'm hearing when these are playing. Right, let, me, let me do the intro. These are so quiet. I have to turn it up to a hundred percent volume just to be able to hear it. Let me let me turn on Chrome audio. Uh, application audio source, Chrome. There we go. So now you can hear the video. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Today oh my we're gosh. going to be looking back at a piece of history. You're supposed to be off. On the 9th of January, 2007, Steve Jobs showed the world this. The original iPhone. The phone... If I do this, it sounds better. ...revolutionized the entire world and has changed history forever. And so given how revolutionary this phone was for the time, what can it still do 14 years after it was released? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. Okay, and uh, I think that's enough of that. Okay, so they don't sound very good, first of all. They don't fit on my head. They don't make a very good seal. Because the whole point of headphones is they're supposed to make a seal on your ear so that you, you get the sound in your ear. But the sound's just going wherever it wants because there's no seal. They don't fit my head. They're not very comfortable. They look ridiculous. I honestly have no idea who these headphones are for <laughs> or why they exist. So I think that's a good, a good point to move on. <laughs> so I think that's a good reason to move on. just put them back in their box maybe I'll return these I feel bad for selling them to someone <laughs> right get in the box Okay, so put those back in the box. Whew. Wow, such professional audio. Wait, I'm confused. Is Poundline like a UK dollar store? Pretty much. I think so. I mean, I've never been in a dollar store. So I don't know what they're like. But it's like everything is around a pound, pretty much. Except these. These were... Now these headphones were actually one of the most more expensive things that we looked at today at £10. So, um, yeah. A little disappointed with those. Avoid these. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Avoid these. Let's take a look at the fitness tracker now that it's been plugged in for a little bit. Well, hey, we've got some life in it. 
don't know how well you can see. Focus on it, please. Please. It only stays on for a few seconds. There we go. You can see it on there. It shows the time and it shows how many steps you've done. Turns off quite quickly though, which is a little bit annoying for filming. Let's put it back in its case or back in its wristband here. Already I think it's too inconvenient to use the fact you have to take it out of the band to charge it, but hey ho. Let's, let's put it on again. Um, come on, this was much easier the first time. <laughs> Maybe I'm just incompetent. <laughs> the, the band's so slippery. It's hard to put it on. Ah, you're kind of like fighting against it, trying to put it on, like it. Like you pull, you have to pull like down to get it on. But once it's on, it's pretty all right. It's pretty light. It's not very heavy, you know. And there you go. Apparently, I've done 27 steps by just sitting here putting it on my wrist. That's encouraging. <laughs> Professionalism. Mm. I think already off the bat I wouldn't entirely trust this thing with, <laughs> with tracking my steps. Where's my my phone's over there. Be right back. I am back. I just had to unplug my microphone so I could walk over there and get my phone. Okay, so let's try and get the Poundland Fitness Tracker app here. It's got a QR code to scan. Um, scanner. Scan the QR code. Android download. Oh. So, I don't know if you can read that on my phone. Focus on the phone. File might be harmful. Do you want to download yoho underscore blah 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 dot apk? So this app isn't on the app store. This app is on some unsecure website without HTTPS. So this, this app isn't on the App Store. It is on some unsecure website with a random download for the APK file. Needless to say, uh, I'm not going to be downloading that because I don't trust it. <laughs> but is there anything you can actually do on here itself? Ooh. State. It came up with a, a thing. I need like a, I need to turn around here so you can see what I'm doing. As you hold it down, state. What is it trying to tell me? Oh, BPM. SPO2. 
Is it like oxygen thing? Is it a touch screen? I don't think it's a touch screen. Sports, music, more, and then back to the screen. I don't think it's a touch screen. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Can you focus on my arm, please? <laughs> so it's got BPM, SPO2. But how do I, how do I get it to read anything? What if I leave it? Sports. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed with the fitness tracker here. I thought this might actually be somewhat useful, but judging by the fact it's told me that I've walked 27 steps just from sitting in this chair and talking to you and showing you the different screens that it displays. And the fact that I don't think this is even a touch screen. This is just a screen with a button on it. I'm not sure you should buy this. <laughs> it doesn't see, I don't know how much you can trust the app. If you want to install the app when you buy this, go ahead. But I'm not because I value my security somewhat. Especially after my Discord account getting hacked this week. Uh, so yeah, so, um, yeah, slightly disappointed with the fitness tracker. Not sure how much I'm gonna, so yeah, I'd probably avoid this. <laughs> and speaking of trackers I did actually buy the wireless tracker thing which is supposed to be like an air tag those of you who don't know air tags are kind of like things that you put on your as you can see by the pictures at the bottom you put them on your belongings you can see they've got them on their keys their bag and then you can track down what your where your belongings are using your phone but if this requires, but this is also by, this is also apparently part of the, however, this is also apparently part of the Vildo, or Vido, I don't know how to say that, lifestyle. And so if this is going to ask me to install the same app, um, that's going to be a little inconvenient. So opening up the box, we have a big bit of plastic with the tracker itself, as well as a instructions thing. It does also have an app. Open the smartphone, make sure you allow notifications. Um, Using the app, open the app on your smartphone, making sure to allow notifications. But it doesn't tell you what app to use. The product is a wireless device using the iSearching application. Okay, so it might actually use a different application. How did my Discord account get hacked? I don't know. Someone started messaging from my account. <laughs> Bit annoying. Uh, so let's go onto the app store here and look for I searching. There we go. Install. You can see the I searching app installing there.
Okay. So eye searching wants to so it wants to turn on Bluetooth. I'll click allow. I'll just turn on Bluetooth myself, I think. <laughs> Got a nice privacy policy that I'm going to agree to. Allow eye searching to take pictures and record videos. Allow eye searching to access your device's location at all times. Allow eye searching to access photos, media files on your device. Allow eye searching to record audio. Why does it need any of these positions? I don't know. Location I can understand. You know, GPS, so you can connect to the tracker. But why do you need to access my camera as well as my files as well as anything else? But why do you need to access my my camera, my microphone. Bit suspicious. Please turn on phone targeting to help scan and target device. Yes or no? <laughs> so it says here, please turn on phone targeting to help scan and target devices. Yes or no? It's not asking me a question though. So I'm not entirely sure how to answer. I'm gonna say yes. I wanna turn on location thing. Okay, so where are the instructions? Where did I put them? So now it says turn on and hold the, down the function button for at least three seconds. The product will beep twice. Okay, so let's take the product here. It's got a battery thing to pull out, which is fairly standard for battery powered products. Okay, so let's hold down the button for three seconds. seem to be doing anything <laughs> there we go it beat for three set for a bit tap find device and make the trapper beep again to find your item settings location It just tells me my location. Interesting that it uses, it doesn't use Google Maps, but it uses Baidu Maps, which appears to be in Chinese, or which appears to be in an Asian language that I can't read. I'm not gonna show you the map because it's showing my location. But if I like, I don't know, go up to, to London here. I mean, you can see there, this is the map that it uses. It's got Bai, Baidu, Baidu maps on the application. It's interesting that it doesn't just use Google Maps like the majority of other apps. <laughs> Uh, devices searching. Ooh, it's found. There we go. Vido tracker, as well as a different device. It's found a Vido tracker there and a different device. I don't know what that is, but connect to Vido tracker. It's given me. Oh, it gave me a prompt in an Asian language I couldn't read. So if I do alert, oh, 
Okay, so that seems to, to function correctly. So now, if I, for example, let me take off the plastic thing. So now, for example, if I were to put this on my keys, I could now press the alert button in the app. It starts beeping. And then when I want it to stop, I press stop. And it stops. There you go. And this is so given the fact that this device actually uses an app on the Play Store and not some random APK from an unsecure website. I feel a little more safe for endorsing this product. <laughs> but my question is, can you actually locate the, the tracker? Um, find my, okay, so you can go into the settings here of the device and you can change the volume of the alarm. You can change the, you can't change the ring tone, but you can change the ring ton. <laughs> what are the options? Oh, they're not, they're not called, they're not, apparently then, uh, once you actually click through, they're not called ring tons, they're called alarm tons. <laughs> Funny name. So the, the first one is that. Alarm ton two. It's just playing these out on my phone at the minute. What's alarm? So what if I set it to alarm ton seven as a police siren and then go back out? Does, does the tracker play that? Anti-lost. Alarm distance set. Ring turn. I'm not entirely sure how to use this application. I've got to be honest with you. So if I do alert now. It's definitely still beeping. What's the... What are the ringtones and alarm tons? What are the ringtones and the alarm tons for then? I don't know what they're for, because I don't think this device can produce that kind of sound. And this is in the video tracker settings, or the VO tracker settings. And these are in the view video tracker settings, so it's not like the setting is to find my phone or something. There is also just a straight up photograph app. There is also just a straight up photograph app in the phone as well. I'm not entirely sure why there's a photograph app in my find my app. It seems like a weird inclusion. I guess that's why I wanted access to my camera though. Oh, you can, you can actually switch from Baidu apps to Google Maps if you go into the settings. So if I switch it to Google Maps now. Yeah, now it's using Google Maps. Which is probably much more helpful for people outside of Asia. <laughs> Those are some lovely sounds. Debatable, debatable, but uh, I would, I'm not sure I'd personally use the word lovely myself. 
but there we go now it's using Google Maps can you not dox me please <laughs> um, so maybe this is not like air tags after all because there doesn't seem to be any kind of setting to track the location of this you can just so I guess if you lose something around your house this would be quite helpful but if you lose something out and about this doesn't appear to be able to this doesn't seem to have any GPS things in it and so you don't seem to be able to like find it in if it's lost like if you I don't know if you if you leave it somewhere in public for example if you put this like on your wallet or on your keys for example um, I don't think it'd be very helpful when out and about it just seems to be helpful when at home <laughs> so if you are just looking for a basic like a BP thing to go on your keys and find your find your keys when you're at home it's all right I guess I don't mind it it's, it's a pretty simple device I might keep this and put it on my keys it's very easy to set up it doesn't have it, uh, the app seems I mean it's a basic app but it seems quite functional but yeah if you definitely not an air pad uh, definitely but yeah definitely not like an air tags competitor or anything it's just for things in a when you know the rough location of the do it's i think it's just for just when you find i think it's just for when you know the rough location of the thing you're looking for so you can engage the beep alarm and make it play and so that's it that's all the products i've got for today Let's go, let's go do a quick rundown of everything we bought. Or everything I bought. You guys just kind of watched me. So the first product was the gaming sound bar. Conclusion of this, wouldn't use it for gaming, but not that bad as just like a cheap speaker to play YouTube videos or casual gaming. The gaming mouse, pretty good, I don't know, it's pretty comfortable, pretty clicky, doesn't feel like it would break too easily, just a little bit rough from there being no padding on the bottom of the mouse, but apart from that, it works, it's a pretty good mouse, apart from that, it's pretty good. Then we have the fitness tracker and the friends headphones, which I would both advise you avoid. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd want these headphones. Since anyone interested in friends, these wouldn't fit their head. And anyone who's a child and they, their heads would fit, they're not interested in friends because friends is like a 20 plus year old show. And then this, I just didn't trust the app. I'm just not, I'm just not going to trust the app for this. I wouldn't recommend installing any app from not the app store. And then this, I just didn't want to install the app because it's not from the app store and it's just a random file off the internet that could do anything. It could be a virus. It could be malware. It could be spyware. I don't know. I'm not going to find out. And then last but not least, and then last but not least, we got the wireless tracker, which yeah, it's it's fine. It's a very cheap device. This I think was six pounds, if I'm not mistaken. And so for six pounds to have a little thing to put on your keys to make sure you don't lose them to i mean it's a pretty as you can see it's it's pretty small you know 
And so if you just want something to put on your handbag or as if you want something to put on your purse or your wallet or if you want to put it on your keys, if you're going to lose them, this might be all right. I might put this in my wallet. <laughs> but don't expect it to be like an air tag replacement or anything because, yeah, it doesn't seem to be that advanced. But thank you all for watching the stream. I hope you all enjoyed. I've been streaming for an hour and 40 minutes. So it'll be longer than that. Thank you all for coming. I hope you all enjoyed. I now have to clear up this mess of Poundland products and figure out what I'm going to return and what I'm not going to return. <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm going to put this in my wallet so I don't lose it. Because I'm always losing my wallet. That's the one thing I'm always losing. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I don't think anyone's streaming. Is anyone streaming right now that we could raid, maybe? Doesn't really appear so. I think Beyond's raiding, or raiding, streaming, but yeah, I think we'll, I think we'll leave the stream there. Thank you all for coming. If you have, I mean, if you have any questions about the products, I usually say at the end of the stream, you can do a Q and A ask any questions about the product but these products are pretty basic I don't feel you need to know much more but thank you all for watching this stream and I will see you all uh, tomorrow if you want to hang out on Twitch link in the description if you want to follow me on Twitch uh, I'll probably be streaming tomorrow I tend to stream Sunday afternoons so if you'd like to come by that and if you did like the stream I would appreciate if you liked and commented and subscribed so yeah thank you for watching bye bye and stream